And now, the adventures of Superman. As our story begins, it's just after quitting time at the Metropolis Daily Planet. And Clark Kent, who unknown to all, is Superman, walks briskly into the almost deserted city room. As he starts toward his office, he is surprised to see that cub reporter Jimmy Olsen is still at his desk. Well, how come you're still here, Jim? Oh, well, you see, Mr. Kent... You're waiting to hear what happened to John and George Mason in court, I can tell you. No, look, They've I... They've both been turned over to the grand jury. Gee, that's swell, but... But... But, but what? You don't seem very pleased to hear that the two bigots who almost finished you and Howard Jones are being taken out of circulation. Oh, sure, I'm pleased. I'm tickled to death. It... Well, it's just that I'm kind of dizzy. Dizzy? You mean you feel sick? No, just dizzy. Over what Miss Lane said. Lois? What do you mean? Well, she went sailing out of here a little while ago with a traveling bag and a briefcase. When I asked her where she was going, she said she didn't know. She didn't know? That's right. She said all she knew was that she was going quite a distance, but that she'd have to figure out just where she was going when she got on the plane. I don't get it. Neither do I. She said she was on a terrific story, but she might run into danger. Danger? Yeah. She said if anything happened to her, or we didn't hear from her by this time tomorrow, we would have worked out the crossword puzzle in the Daily Planet for the day before yesterday, and... And that would tell us where she went. Oh, it would, huh? That's what she said. Can you figure it out, Mr. Kent? Well, of course, can't you? No, and I don't mind telling you. I'm kind of worried. Oh, I'm surprised at you, Jim. Don't you know when you're being taken for a ride? Taken for a ride? Sure, kid had ribbed, having your leg pulled. In plain words, Lois was having a little fun with you. You, you mean she didn't mean all that stuff? Well, what do you think? Would she get on a plane and not know where she was going? <laughs> She said she might run into danger. Sure, and you fell for it. Oh, Jim. Oh, it does sound corny now that I think of it. Well, sure. Because I was pretty dumb to go for a gag like that, wasn't oh, I? Oh, brother. Why Lois is that you took her seriously. You'll never be able to live this down. Miss, uh, Miss Lane. Yes? I thought you might like to know that the sign above the pilot's cabin asks us to fasten our safety belts. We're about to begin our descent to the airport. Oh, uh, uh, yes, uh, thank you, Professor. You're quite welcome. Wait a minute, I've got it. I beg your the pardon. The five-letter word for the talking bird beginning with J is Jacua. Well, I believe you're right. J-A-C-U-A. Yes, that works out. And that nine-letter word you gave me for the ancient wind instrument, glad you let fits right here. Hmm? See, Professor, that makes the crossword puzzle complete. And now I can find the answer. The answer to what, Miss Lane? Well, I told you my destination is given in this puzzle. Let's see now. Ah, uh, uh, here, of course, Moundville. Moundville? Uh-huh, that sounds like a town or village, doesn't it? Why, yes, but I... Wait a minute, I've got a map right here. You know it's west of Chicago. I'll look in the index. Well, surely you're not serious. I mean, about having boarded this plane in Metropolis without knowing your destination. Why, of course I'm serious. You haven't let me in. But I don't understand. You seem to be an intelligent young woman who... I'm on a big newspaper story, Professor, and all I was told was that... Here it is, Moundville. Huh? Where is it? Right here at the edge of the desert. See it? Oh, yes. Now, if I can get another plane out of Chicago right away, I can be in Moundville by evening. There, now, let's have a look at the time. airport nearest to Moundville, sir. Uh, let me see, miss. Ah, yes, here it is, Desert City. Okay, give me a ticket to Desert City, please. I'll hire a taxi or something to get to Moundville. Yeah. You say you want to go to Moundville, miss? Yes, that's right, and I want to get there as quickly as possible. Can you drive me there right now? Yeah, I can, but I'd rather not. What do you mean? Just what I say. I'd rather not take you to Moundville. Why not? I'll pay you well. Think that. Just rather not take you. But why? I don't understand. You would if you knew what I know about the place. What's the matter with it? Can't say exactly. Can't say? Nope. Just kind of a feeling I've got. Oh, now that's a lot of nonsense. Now, look, you're a public taxi driver. You call that ancient jalopy you're driving a taxi. And I'm willing to pay your regular fare, twice your fare if you like, to take me to Moundville. What's more, it's my guess that the local law compels you to drive me, so... Uh... If you put it like that, uh, yes, I've got it. Well, now you're talking. Let's get started. Okay, miss. Thank you. Now, 
wish you'd tell me why you tried to frighten me with that silly talk. It ain't silly talk, miss. Oh, it is too silly. I wasn't born yesterday, you know. Here we go, then. But if you don't ever come back from Mountville, remember, I warned you. My brother, Miss Lane, you got here just in time. Really? In time for what, Mr. Horn? Well, for the greatest story you've ever heard of. It's going to break right away, and you and I will have an exclusive on it. Now, how do you like that? Well, I like it fine, but just what is this story you've been so mysterious about? Well... Why couldn't you tell me about it on the long distance phone this morning? And why all the hope folks about my having to find this place by solving the crossword puzzle? Well, that's just it, Miss Lane. That's just what? That's the nub of the whole thing. The kernel of the corn, you might say. You might say, but I don't get it. Now, what... I, I mean, that, that's how the plot works. I, I wanted you to follow it just as I did so that you'd understand everything, you see. No, I definitely do, do not see. Will you please make sense and tell me what this is all about? Uh, I'll tell you everything, but first, I want to make sure that we're alone. Well, of course we're alone. You can see that. Well, never did I you know. Outside the door. Just whom would you expect to find out there? Well, one of the first tenets of a successful detective, Miss Lane, is never overlook a detail, no matter how trivial it is. I know. Now, but that's why I graduated. I've been coming out here from the famous correspondence institute for detectives and crime solutions. Now, I know all about how you graduated from Laddie this morning. And if I hadn't seen your work, I'd think you graduated from the booby hatch. Now, will you please tell me what this is all about? Very well. I don't believe that's my illness. Matter of fact, I don't believe they suspect us at all. Wonderful. Now that we've got that set, let's get down to cases, shall we? Just why am I here? Why are you here? Just what is this earth-shaking scoop you're being so mysterious about? Uh, very well. Here it is, Miss Lane. What I am about to reveal to you is one of the greatest stories and one of the most dastardly plots you've ever heard in your life. You see, I first suspected these people when I heard that... Uh, Mr. Horn! Mr. Horn, where are you? Mr. Horn! Mr. Horn! Good heavens, he... He disappears. Your eyes wide with amazement and alarm. Lois Lane gazes about the barrel of the jury room and sees that it is entirely... What has happened to Horatio Horn? How could he have disappeared? And what was the sensational story? Fellows and girls, this is only his entire career. No way. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same through Friday at this same time. This program came from New York. Stay tuned to your official station for Captain Midnight, which follows in just a moment. And by after Captain Midnight, you will hear Tom Hanks and his Ralston straight shooter. This is the Mutual Podcasting System. Uh, what's that you say about Miss Horn, Miss? He disappeared. He was standing right there where you are, talking to me. Suddenly the light seemed to blink. It was only for about a second, but when they brightened again, Mr. Horn was gone. Uh, disappeared, eh? Yes, it was as if he'd gone up in a, in a, in a puff of smoke. Uh-huh. Well, please, don't just stand there looking at me as if I were crazy. You, you've got to do something. Well, yeah. Yeah, I've got to take the ashes out of the cellar. Well... Don't worry, lady. You'll be feeling you better. You come back while. here. Please, you've got to believe me. You've got to help me find Mr. Horn. I'm afraid something something terrible has happened to him. Now, look, miss. Folks just don't go vanishing up in smoke, you know. I know that, but... He'll be coming back soon. Now, you just sit down and take a little rest. Oh, you'll drive me mad. Is, is there a phone in this room? Nope. One out in the lobby, though. Where? Show me. I'll call the police station. Uh, ain't no police station in Moundville. There isn't. Nope. Just a jail, sheriff with us. Well, where'll I find the sheriff? Uh, you'll be hard put to find him now. He's up to the mines. The trouble up there. At the mines? Where are they? All around here. But the sheriff went up to the Star Plaza. That's way up in the hills. Take you half a day to get there. Half a you day? Good, horse. good heavens, what'll I do? You do like I say, lady. Sit down and rest till your friend comes back. Bye. <laughs> Huh? Oh, yes, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Say, have you worked out any crossword puzzles lately? Oh, now, cut it out, <laughs> Mr. Kent. Stop kidding me. Oh, i got to remember to tell Mr. White. J- well, what was it Lois said? If oh. you don't hear from me, work out the crossword puzzle in the planet of month before well, last. You said and you... the day before yesterday. Oh, yes, but yes, I yes. Wish day you... before yesterday. Work out the crossword puzzle, and you'll know where I went. <laughs> oh, brother. Ooh, the chief will get a real kick out of that. Oh, now, please don't tell him, Mr. Kent. Well, we'll see. <laughs> 
But I didn't call you in the kitchen, Jim. I want to tell you the chief and I are going away. Oh, where are you we... going? Sorry, no can tell. It's all very hush-hush. Oh, big stuff, huh? Mm-hmm. The, uh, the international situation, maybe? Uh, 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 no guessing. But I'd like you to do something for me. Oh, sure, what is it? Well, I'm expecting an important phone call. Perhaps two calls from the state capitol today. And I'd appreciate your working here in my office so you can take those calls. Just explain that I was called away unexpectedly, but that I'll be back tomorrow, and I've delegated you to accept any messages for me. You got that? Yeah, sure. But listen... Good, I'll be going then. i got to pick up the chief at City Hall. See you tomorrow, Jim. Thanks. Oh, wait, Mr. Kent. Can't you just tell me where you're going? No. In case, uh, in case these fellows from the Capitol ask? You mean you want to know? Well, no, but... <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Just work out the crossword puzzle on the planet for three years ago last St. Patrick's Day, Jim, and you'll know. Oh. <laughs> so long. Oh, golly. I guess I'll never live that down. Hello, this is Mr. Kent's office. James Olson speaking. Jim, this is Lois. Miss Lane. Put Clark on the phone, please, will you, Jim? Hurry. Oh, uh, he can't be disturbed right now. He's working out a crossword puzzle. What? Oh, now, Lois. I said he's working out a crossword puzzle. He wants to find out where to go on his vacation. Now, stop that, Jim. Put Clark on the phone at once. I'm in trouble. Trouble, huh? Now, let's see. That's a seven-letter word. Jim, something terrible has happened to Rachel Moore. Jeepers, you sure can put on an act, Miss Lane. I wish Mr. Kent was around to hear you. What do you mean? Is he there? Uh, the answer is a two-letter word meaning the negative. Well, where is he? Well, I don't know, well, but find I... find out. Ask Mr. Burroughs or somebody. I simply have to talk to Clark at once. Oh, now, look, Miss Lane, you've already milked that gag dry. Mr. Kent isn't going to fall for it like I did. And I'm on to you now, so... Stop playing the fool at a time like this. I tell you, something terrible has happened. Horatio Moore just disappeared. Oh, you mean the uh, Sherlock Holmes of Screen Run? Yes, I came here to Mountville to meet him because, well, he's... On the trail of a terrific story. But just as he started to tell me about it, he, he disappeared. Oh, went up in the smoke of a crossword puzzle, I bet. Oh, look, Jim, get this for the love of heaven. Find Clark wherever he is and tell him I'm in terrible trouble at Moundville. That's just at the edge of the desert. There's only one hotel here. Oh, golly, here. you ought to be on the stage, Miss Lane. No Jimmy, kidding. Listen, please. I. Oh, no. Oh, no. Keep away from, from me. <laughs> Honest, Miss Lane, you're wonderful. Keep it up. Go on, Miss Lane. Scream again. <laughs> Miss Lane? Hello? I'm sorry, but your party can't come up. Do you wish me to call her back? <laughs> no, thanks, operator. I heard enough. <laughs> oh, boy. What an act she put on. But I guess she knows now she can't fool me anymore. The small, shabby lobby of the hotel in Moundville, where two sagging straw-bottomed chairs and a drooping sand-dusted cactus plant make up the entire furnishings. Lois Lane was standing before a telephone on the wall, speaking to a cynical Jimmy Olsen in Metropolis, when she saw a man sidle into the hotel and approach her. A tall, swarthy-faced, black-haired man, wearing an ancient, rusty frock coat, a soiled, stiff shirt without a collar, and torn canvas tennis shoes, to which damp earth clung. As he moved toward Lois in a peculiar, pigeon-toed fashion, he smiled, displaying two solid rows of gold teeth. As the man moved toward her, smiling his mirthless smile, Lois gasped. Then she hung up the phone and ran along the dark hall to the room at the end of the corridor, from which Horatio Horn had disappeared. Swiftly, she opened the door, then closed it behind her and reached for the key. But there was no key. Her heart pounding, the frightened girl reporter leaned against the door and heard heavy footsteps in the corridor. Slowly they approached her door and stopped. With the sharp rapping of hard knuckles against the door, echoed by the thumping of her heart, Lois presses back against the wall, her eyes wide. Who is this man? Does he mean danger to Lois? Jimmy Olsen, who alone knows where Lois is, believes, as did Clark Kent, that she is in no trouble, but is playing a joke on them. A weird-looking man who startled Lois in the shabby hotel lobby knocks on her door. Then, without waiting for a reply, he pushes the door open and enters the bare little room. Tall, red-faced, and white-haired, the mysterious stranger is dressed in an ancient, rusty frock coat a soiled, stiff shirt with no collar and torn canvas sneakers. Now, as Lois, her heart pounding, presses back against the wall, the man advances toward her, his wide, mirthless smile displaying two solid rows of gold teeth. Forcing back a scream, Lois asks, Who are you? How dare you just... 
Just walk into my room like this. This ain't your room, lady. It's my room. Your room? Sure. I own this hotel. Oh. Oh, well. Ketchell's the name. Frosty Ketchell. What, what I want to know is, what's all this crazy stuff you've been telling my handyman, Willie? It, it's true. Mr. Horn, Horatio Horn of Screen Run, Ohio, he's the local correspondent out there for my paper, the Metropolis Daily Times. I don't care about all the names and places. I just want to tell you... Look, Mr. Ketchell, not more than half an hour ago, Mr. Horn was standing right here, just where I'm standing now. He was telling me about... Well, about something, when the lights seemed to blink. It wasn't more than a second before they brightened again, and when they did, Mr. Horn was gone. You don't see anything to get all head up on about that? Well, you don't seem to understand. Mr. Horn just disappeared right before my very eyes. I, I can't understand it, but I'm afraid something terrible has happened to him. Didn't anything happen to him? Just walked up. But he didn't. I would have seen him. You said the lights went dim, didn't you? Well, yes, but only for about a second, not any more. He couldn't have walked out of the room in that time. He did, though. I seen him. You saw him? Sure. I was coming along Main Street when he come busting out of the hotel. Hello there, Mr. Horn. I says to him, seems like you're in a powerful hurry to get someplace. He says, I am. He says, she says I forgot something mighty important up to the city. I... You had to get up there right away. Oh, really? What city? Uh, well, how do I know? Doesn't happen to him in my hotel, though. He went out of here on his own power. I don't believe that, Mr. Ketchum. Now, look Mr. Here, Horn Mr. did not leave this room under his own power, as you say. Something happened to him, and I'm beginning to think that you had... You're beginning to think what? Well, I'm going to find out what happened to him. I tell you, he left town, and I'm advising you to do the same. This place ain't healthy for you. What do you mean by that? Well, Moundville's a rough town, Miss. Miners and prospectors and such, you know. Uh, I'll get you a ride to Desert City. You can get in a train or an airplane from there. No, thanks, Mr. Ketchell. I'm staying right here until I find Mr. Horn, and that is final. I am warning you, Miss. Get out of Moundville. Get out right now for your own good. <laughs> Miss Lane on the phone just before, Beanie. Honest, she was a riot. Yeah, what'd she say, Jeff? Well, get this. She said she was in a jam in a little town way out in the desert, and she wanted me to find Mr. Kent and send him out there right away on account of Horatio Horn had just disappeared. Horatio Ho Horn. Well, you know our wacky correspondent out in Screen Run, Ohio. The correspondent school Sherlock Holmes. Oh, Hammond. Uh -huh. What an act she put on. She even screamed over the phone. She did. Well, well, look, Jim, maybe we ought to do something, huh? Maybe we ought to call Mr. Well, Kent. don't be silly. Just because I fell for the gag before, she... Well, will I answer the phone, Beanie? Mr. Kent's office, James Olson speaking. No, Mr. Kent won't be back till tomorrow. He said I should take any messages for him, though. No, I don't know where he is. Well, who's calling, please? Who? Miss Horn. Is that Horatio Horn? No, his sister. Uh-huh. Yes, ma'am. Well, gee whiz, Miss Horn, I can't understand what... Yes, she did, but I thought... Oh, gosh. Sure, I'll tell Mr. Ken as soon as I see him. Yeah, I'll tell him to call you. Okay, goodbye. How do you like what that? What gives, Jim? Well, that was Horatio Horn's sister calling long distance from Screen Run. Jeepers, what did she want? She wanted to talk to Mr. Kent because she said Horatio told her to call Mr. Kent if anything happened to him. And she's afraid something did happen to him. No kidding. Yeah, she said Horatio left Screen Run the night before last. Said he was going on a big story for the Daily Planet with Miss Lane. And she hasn't heard from him since. Oh, jeepers, maybe something did happen to him then, like, like Miss Lane said on the phone. Well, that's what I was thinking. Only... Only what? Well, I was sure Miss Lane was joking. So was Mr. Kent. Jimmy, I think we ought to get hold of Mr. Kent no, and we tell can't. Him... He and Mr. White went someplace on a big deal. Very hush-hush. He said he couldn't even tell me where they were going. Well, what'll we do? Jeepers, I don't know what... Look, Beanie, I'm going out there. Out where? To that mining town where Miss Lane said she was. Are you kidding? No, I don't know where Mr. Kent is or Mr. White, so I've got to go. But look, don't you let out a peep about this until I get back. You promise? Well, well, sure, Jim, but suppose you get in trouble, too. What, man? Well, don't worry, I won't. Look, Beanie, you call up my mother and tell her I won't be home tonight, will you? Tell her I'm working on a story and, well, I'll, I'll be in touch with her. Okay, Jim, but I think you ought to no, wait I can't until... wait. Maybe this is a gag. But if it isn't, then Miss Lane needs me. So long, Beanie. Be seeing you. You want a room, Bob? Well, I'm not sure yet. I, I'd like to see Miss Lane, please. 
Who? Miss Lois Lane. She's a reporter for the Metropolis Daily Planet. She's staying here. Ain't nobody with that name stopping here, Bob. Huh? Are you sure? Of course, I'm sure. The owner of this hotel, I don't know. But, but at the station, they told me this is the only hotel in town. And Miss Lane said on the phone she was at the hotel, She so... ain't registered here, Bob. What's more, she never was. Well, well, how do you like that? I fell for a gag again and came all the way across the country, too. Boy, am I the prize, though. That's that you're talking about, Bob. Oh, but nothing, mister. Look, do you know if I can get a taxi to take me to the airport in Desert City? I'm going back to Metropolis. Sure, sure. Joe Hanks, right up the street outside the Silver Dollar. He'll take you to Desert City. Thanks. I'm sorry I bothered you. That's okay, Bob. Good night. Good night. Boy, oh boy. I take the cake. What? Oh, oh, here I am, Jim, in the store entrance. Sleeping lizard. Miss Lane. Yes. Well, I thought you'd never get here. Where's Clark Kent? I don't know. Listen. You don't know? No, he went someplace with Mr. White yesterday. I don't know where they... Oh, good heavens, but I need him badly. Why? What's up? Look, will you tell me what this is all about? I thought you were kidding all the time. Kidding? Good heavens. You were all that baloney about you not knowing where you were going and for me to figure it out in a crossword puzzle. When that old red-faced character in the hotel told me just now you weren't there and never were, I was sure it was all a gag. Mr. Ketchell said I was never at the hotel. I don't know what his name is. A weird-looking guy with gold teeth. He was wearing a frock coat that must be a hundred years old. And torn old sneakers. That's Mr. Ketchell, all right. And now I know he's mixed up in this. In what? In Horatio Horn's disappearance and... Wait. I was so excited seeing you, I forgot that. What's this about Horatio Horn disappearing? It's true, Jim. He vanished before my very eyes. He vanished? That's right. We were in the hotel talking. He was starting to tell me about a terrific story he'd got hold of and which he wanted me to help him with. And suddenly the light dimmed just for about a second. And when it brightened again, Mr. Horn was gone. Gone? Yes, he wasn't in his room or or in the hall or any place. He, he just vanished. Well, now, look, Miss Lane, people can't just vanish, of you know. Of course they can't, Jim, and that's why I'm so sure something has happened to Horatio, and we've got to find him. We? Yes, you and I, since Clark isn't here to help. But, but what about the police? Didn't you go to them? Well, there isn't any police force in this town. Only a sheriff who's way up at the mine somewhere and won't be back for a day or two, so it's up to you and me, Jim. Holy smokes, what can we... Well, the first thing to do is get back into the hotel. You've got to take care of that. Me? How? Well, Mr. Ketchell won't let me into the hotel because I told him I think he knows what happened to Horatio. So I want you to get a room in the hotel, Jim. And then I'll join you and we'll look for Horatio together. Okay, but but if he thinks I'm with you... Oh, he doesn't. I told him I was going back to Metropolis. Oh. Well, okay, but... But what? Are you afraid, Jim? No, not exactly. Then go ahead. And after you get your room, go to the back door of the hotel. It's at the end of the first floor corridor. Unlock it, and I'll be there. All right, Miss Lena. I'll do my best. It's uh, awful late, and I'm pretty tired, Mr. Ketchell. So I decided to stay here all morning and then go back to Metropolis. Will you give me a room, please? Sorry, bub. They're all filled up. Oh, gee. Look, isn't there some place you can put me up? Nope. Like I said, we're all filled up. Oh, well, golly, Mr. Look, I uh, want some good advice, Bob. Huh? Well, what do you mean? Get out of Mount Dill tonight. Tonight? Why? Because it's kind of an unhealthy place, that's why. Good night, Bob. <laughs> He was lying, Jim. His clerk told me only one room in the whole place is rented. Just wanted to keep you out of the hotel. Well, he did it. So what do we do now? What do you suppose? Come on. Where? We're going to get into that hotel, Jim. Frosty Ketchel or no Frosty Ketchel. Come on. Ratio's room was at the end of the building, Jim, on the first floor. And the window looked out on this empty lot. Here, this must be it. Wait a minute. I'll rub some of the dirt off the window. If there's a bright moon, we'll be able to see if anybody's in there. Now, let's see. Anybody there? No. Here, let's try to get this window open. Okay. Oh, I think it's locked. No, it's just stuck. Push, Jim. I am. I think it's coming. Jim. We don't want Ketchel to hear us. Can't help it if the window sticks. We'll take it easy, just a little at a time. Okay. Oh, dear, I do hope he doesn't hear this noise. Me both. 
There. That's enough, Jim. Now we crawl in. Uh huh. Go ahead. Okay. Here goes. <laughs> So far, so good. Well, now, are you sure this is the room Horatio Horn disappeared in? I'm positive. A closet in the room? I can't figure it out. Are you sure he didn't just walk out through the door? I know he didn't, Jim. The lights weren't out for more than a second. I would have seen him and I would have heard him. Look, let's try to figure this out from the beginning. Just where were you when it happened? Well, I was standing right about there. Uh-huh. And Horatio was standing right here where I am now. He was just starting to tell me about this terrific story he was following when suddenly he cried out at... Oh, Jim! What the... Miss Lane. Miss Lane. Miss Lane, where are you? Holy smokes. Now... Now she's disappeared. Now, believing he must be dreaming, Jimmy stands in the small room lit only by the moon shining through the window, staring at the spot where he last saw Lois. Miss Lane. Miss Lane. Miss Lane! Miss... Oh! This here is the room you heard the noise come from? Yeah, Frosty. Number eight. Same one Miss Lane claimed that guy Horn disappeared in. Uh, well, I switch on the lights. So, nobody here. Uh, that's funny. I was sure I heard somebody yelling in here. Hey, you must have been dreaming, Willie. Well... Let's go down the stairs. Scratching his head, Weary Willie, the combination hotel clerk, bookkeeper, and porter, follows Frosty Ketchell, his employer, from the room. The moonlight filters through the dirty window, plays on the ancient frayed carpet and the few dreary pieces of furniture. But there is no sign of life in the room. The following morning, 2,000 miles away in Metropolis, Clark Kent has just entered his office in the Daily Planet when Mr. Burroughs, the city editor, calls him on the inter-office phone. Yes? Kent, this is Burroughs. Yes, Burroughs. Do you have any idea where Jim Olsen is? Why, no. Hasn't he come in yet? No. Mother says she understood he was out on the story. What? I didn't assign him to any story, though. You? Why, no. Uh, he's probably playing hooky. I'll check up on him right away, Burroughs. Hmm. That's strange. I wonder if Beanie knows anything about this. Uh, Miss Backrack, please ask Beanie Martin to come into my office right away. You want to see me, Mr. Kent? Oh, yes, Beanie. Look, do you have any idea where Jim is? Why, uh, you mean Jim Olson? Yes, Jim Olson. His mother says she understood he was out on a story, but neither Mr. Burroughs nor I know anything about it. Do you? Uh, well, yes, no. Uh, what does that mean? I mean... Well, I do know something about it, but then on the other hand, I don't either. Say, what is this? That's all I know, Mr. Kent. Well, I gotta go back. Beanie, to... come back here. Huh? What kind of double talk are you giving me? Gee whiz, I can't tell you anymore. Honest, Mr. Kent, I, I promise. You promised what? To whom? I promised Jim not to say a word about it to, to anybody until he got back. Till he got back from where? From where he went. Now, look here, Beanie. Honest, I take... Mr. Kent, I promise. You listen to me, Beanie. While Mr. White is mayor, I'm in charge of the Daily Planet. You know that, don't you? Well, sure I know. Well, Jim Olson is away from the office without permission. And if he's off somewhere representing this paper, it's my duty to know about it. Oh, gee whiz. Just a minute. Don't you go, Beanie. Okay. Hello. Yes, this is Clark Kent. Who? Oh, Miss Horn of Screen Run, Ohio. Of course. You're Horatio's sister. Gee whiz. Why, no. I didn't find any message to call you, Miss Horn. I was out of town yesterday and... You talked to Jim Olson? Oh, golly. Well, I haven't seen Jim yet this morning, but what can I do for you? How's Horatio? What? What did you say? With Miss Lane? But I thought... No, she didn't say anything to me about it, but... He did, eh? Oh, brother. Uh-huh. Yes, well... Well, now, 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 look, look, look Miss Horn, don't you worry. No, I'll check up and call you back. Now, don't you worry. All right, goodbye, Miss Horn. Beanie... Miss Horn says she talked to Jim yesterday morning about her brother, Horatio, and Miss Lane. Do you know anything about that? Well, yes, sir. What? Well, Miss Horn phoned yesterday right after Miss Lane did. What's that? 
Lois phoned yesterday, too? Sure, she said Horatio Horn had just disappeared. Disappeared? And that's what she told Jim, and she said she was in danger, too, and she wanted you to come right out there. So Jim, not knowing where to get hold of me, rushed out to where Miss Lane was himself, right? Well, uh, that's right. But he told me not to tell anybody, because in case it was a gag, he'd look pretty silly, see? But where did Jim go, Beanie? Where is Miss Lane? Why, I don't know. You don't know? No. Now, think, Beanie, Jim must have told you. No, sir, he didn't. That's impossible. He must have told you. It was a, a little mining town, I think. Yeah, that was it. Are you sure that's all he said? I'm sure. Horatio didn't tell his sister where he was going either. What'll I do? Gosh, I don't know, Mr. Kent. Maybe you ought to just... Wait a minute, Beanie. I just remembered something. What, Mr. Kent? Lois told Jim that if he didn't hear from her, he could find out where she went by working out the crossword puzzle in the Daily Planet for the day before yesterday. That's right. That was... Wait a minute. Let's see. Lois left Monday morning, so she must have referred to Saturday's paper. Saturday's paper. Get me a copy of that, Beanie. Hurry. Yes, sir. Now, let's see now. A three-letter word for dry. Hmm. Oh, yes, sec. S-E-C. Now, four-letter word for arena. Oh, that's easy. Ring. Uh, hello, Ken. Now, oh, hello, Chief. What's a five-letter word for a talking bird? A uh, parrot. Uh, now, no, look, no, Ken. No, that's six letters. Let's see. A talking bird. Ken. Five letters. What the Sam Hill are you doing? Working a crossword puzzle. Uh, oh, working a crossword bird. puzzle? Uh, have you gone crazy? Uh, no, no. Quiet, please, Chief. Five letters. Don't you tell me to be quiet. I leave you in charge of the paper while I serve the city as mayor and uh, spend your time working crossword puzzles. Uh, what's the matter with you? What goes on here? Oh, I've got it. You've got one. The five-letter word for the talking bird. It's Jacua. J-A-C-U-A. Now, ah, there's just one word left. Kent, if you don't stop this nonsense, I... An old-fashioned wind instrument reminds me of you. Nine letters what? beginning with... Kent! Kent! I'm talking to you! You mean you're shouting at me, Chief, and I wish you'd stop it. I've always got this thing finished. You, you, you won't finish me. I mean, I'll finish you Nine if you don't put that silly puzzle down this instant. Boy, this is a toughie. Wind instrument. Nine letters beginning with F. Nine letters beginning with F. Okay, uh, what's come over you, Kent? Got to find Jim and Lois. Yep. You've got to find Jim and Lois. Nine well, where are they? And Horatio Horn. Let's see. A wind instrument. Wind instrument. Uh, do you expect to find them in a, in a wind instrument? No. Uh, I mean, in a crossword puzzle? Yes. Oh, I mean, oh, oh, please, Chief. I'll explain in a minute. Oh, you will. Well, oh, how very nice of you. Oh, I got it. Flagellette. What? Nine What's that? word for old-fashioned wind instrument is flagellette. That completes the puzzle. Now, oh, congratulations. Yes, thank you, Chief. Now, perhaps you'll tell me what you're working a crossword puzzle for while the Daily Planet right. publishes itself. That's funny. What's funny? It's outrageous. No, wait, a minute, more, wait a minute, you don't understand, Chief. This puzzle is supposed to tell me where Lois went. And Jim. And Horatio Horn, too. But I... I've worked it out, and I... I, I don't get the answer. What'll I do now? Hey, I've got it, Chief. I've got it. You've got what? Where they went. Look, see, if you take the letters running diagonally through the puzzle from one corner to the other, you get Moundville. That sounds like the name of a town, doesn't it? Yes, so what? I'll locate it on a map and then hop out there. See you later, Chief. No, 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 can't wait. I wait. can't, Chief. There's no time. Beanie will tell you all about it. So long. Rushing through the Daily Planet library, Clark Kent pauses before a large map on the wall, quickly locates Moundville, then darts behind a row of tall shelves and peels off his business suit. A moment later, he stands revealed in the blue costume and brilliant red cape of Superman. <laughs> Then, throwing open a window, he hurtles out. Up! Up! And away! Leaping high from the Daily Planet, Superman takes a bearing from the sun, then streaks away to the west, bound for Moundville, where, as we know, Horatio Horn, Lois Lane, and Jimmy Olsen have all disappeared under mysterious and incredible circumstances. Uh, I'm looking for Horatio Horn, Lois Lane, and Jim Olson. Are they registered here? No, they ain't. Are you sure? Yep. Only one guest in the hotel right now. He ain't none of them folks you say. I see, but they were here, weren't they? Nope. That's odd. Isn't this the only hotel in town? Yep. Well, this is a pretty small town. Perhaps you noticed my friends around. Miss Lane has dark hair and is quite pretty. Mr. Horn is short, about 35, I'd say, rather roly-poly. Jim Olson is very young. He's thin and freckle-faced. I uh, didn't see him, mister. Hmm? Can you tell me if there's a sheriff or constable in this town? Yeah. Sheriff Withers. Where's he? He's down at jailhouse up the street behind the Silver Dollar Cafe. Thanks. He's the man I want to see. I can't understand it, Sheriff Withers. Miss Lane phoned Jim Olson yesterday morning and said she was in Moundville with Horatio Horn. Then, as I understand it, Jim came out here to join her. But I can't find any one of them. 
Can you help me? I don't know, Mr. Kent. You come along with me. Won't take us long to go through Moundville, and so be your friends were here, we'll find out about them. Fine. Let's go. Well, we tried every place in town, Mr. Kent. Here's that nobody's seen your friends. Maybe he was wrong about their coming to Moundville. Oh, I'm certain they came here, Sheriff, because... Hey, hold on. What? Lafe Hawkins ought to be getting in with the mail about now. Who's he? Well, Lafe, he totes the mail in here from Desert City. That's the nearest railroad station and airport, and usually if there's any folks wanting to come to Moundville, he brings them in. Oh, I see. Yeah. Hey, Lafe must have brung you in, Mr. Kent. Well, uh, no, no, he... Well, uh, anyhow, he'll know if your friends come to Moundville, so... Let's go on down there to the post office and meet him. He's due any minute. If that jalopy of his doesn't break down, come on, follow me. What you look like, mister? Well, Miss Lane is dark-haired and pretty, Mr. Hawkins, and she... Uh... I remember. You do? Uh, where'd you see her, Lane? She got off in the airplane in uh, Desert City. Let's see, Monday night that was. Well, I hired me to drive her here to Moundville. Well, did you? Yep, I did. Well, shut off your dang motor and tell us about it. I drove the roly poly little fella. That's Horatio Horn. Yep. And I drove him to Moundville in that four. And the uh, skinny, freckled faced young fella. Jim Olson. I brought him right here to Moundville last night. There, you see, Sheriff, I told you they came here. Yeah, yeah. Look here, Lee. Where'd you drive him to? Why, I, I led him out here at the post house where I always do. Do you know where they went from there? Uh, nope, I don't. Well, tell me this, Mr. Hawkins. Did you see Miss Lane or Mr. Horn or Jim Olson again any time after that? Nope, I didn't. I'll be dogged. I can't figure this at all, Mr. Kent. Neither can I, Sheriff. Frankly, I'm baffled. Uh, why are you asking him questions? Did uh, something happen to them, folks? Well, we don't know. We can't find them. Hmm. Don't surprise me, none. What? Matter of fact, wouldn't surprise me, none, if you never seen him again. What are you driving at, Mr. Hawkins? Yeah, if you know anything about them three, Lafe Hawkins, you better tell me and tell me pronto. Me? All I know is the signs, Sheriff. The signs? What do you mean by that? When you've lived around the 70 years in the desert like I have, you get to recognize signs, like. You can't put no name to them exactly, but they're there. I, I don't understand. Ah, this old desert rat is off his noodle, Mr. Kent. I ain't no such thing. There's one sign you must have seen for yourself, Sheriff. Strangers drifting in the mountain build the past week or two dressed like miners, but they ain't miners. Who says so? I do. I've known miners all my life. And I tell you, these fellas ain't miners. All of them tight mouthed with a hard city look in their eyes. I drop them in here. I see them go to the Silver Dollar, maybe, or the Golden Eagle. Then I don't see them no more. So what? They probably go up into the mines to work, that's all. No, Sheriff, I tell you, they ain't miners. There's something queer going on around here. I've seen the signs all over. I say I... You've said enough, Lee. Uh, just a minute, Sheriff, please. Listen, Mr. Hawkins. I if... spoke my piece. Well, soon enough, you'll find out for yourself I was right. The signs don't lie. Oh, but... Goodbye, dear. Oh, wait, wait, Mr. Hawkins. Tell me. I'm... Ah, let him go, Mr. Kent. Son's addled his head. Come on, let's have another look around town. No, I think that's a waste of time, Sheriff. I'm going to have a look around the countryside. I'll see you later. And I can change behind this feed store. Out of these clothes. This is a job for Superman. I can't understand how Lois, Jim, and Horatio came here and then disappeared. Well, I'll find them. There we are. All set. Now, up, up, and away! Several miles above Moundville, the desert floor gives way to a low range of mountains. There, a procession of six horsemen are picking their way up a very narrow winding trail, beside which is a deep yawning chasm six feet across and hundreds of feet deep. The man at the rear of the procession seems to be the leader. He is tall, sharp-eyed, cruel-featured. He turns often to sweep the trail behind, and he keeps a close watch on the horseman before him, who rides with his arms tied behind his back, a blindfold across his eyes, and a tight bandage across his mouth. This rider is lashed to his saddle by a rope, and he is Jimmy Olsen. Suddenly, at a turn in the trail, the first horse shies, as it spies a rattlesnake lying asleep directly in the trail. The men pull up on their reins, steady their horses, and one of them draws a pistol to shoot the deadly snake. But Jimmy Olsen's horse, feeling no steady in hand on the reins, shies wildly, almost plunges off the trail, then gathers itself, and with strength born of fear, leaps across the six-foot gorge. Holy smokes, that fool horse! Put a bullet into him! Stop him! He's making for the canyon! Stop him! The boss wants to see that shit! Kill the horse!
Superman began a search of the surrounding desert and mountains. And suddenly, far ahead and below, he sighted a runaway horse with a human figure lashed to its saddle, bolting down the side of a mountain toward a vast canyon, the sheer rock walls of which dropped away precipitously for hundreds of feet. Great Scott! That's Jim Olsen and he'll be killed! Down to him! Down! Like a red and blue arrow, Superman flashes downward from the skies, rocketing through the spray of the waterfall, even as the panic-crazed horse, feeling the ground give way beneath its feet, launches itself into a frenzied leap. Thrilling wildly, the animal plummets down, down toward the jagged boulders and boiling water. It's Jimmy Olsen, mercifully unconscious now, still lashed to its back. Then, calling on every ounce of strength and speed of his steel spring muscles, Superman sweeps down through the canyon, snatches the kicking horse and its human burden only inches above the rocks of death. Then, fearing in midair, he launches his triumphant cry, Up! Up! And away! Rocketing up from the depths of the canyon, Superman rips away the rope which lashes Jimmy to the horse, lets the plunging animal run away, and bends anxiously over his motionless young friend. Jim. Jim. Thank heaven he's coming to. Easy, son. Easy. Everything's all right now. Superman. That's right. What happened, Jim? Who tied you to that horse? I don't know. You don't know? Uh-uh. It was dark. I couldn't see the men. They knocked me out. When I came to, I was tied on a horse. We were climbing up... Were Miss Lane and Horatio Horn with you? I don't know. I was blind. I know there were some men on horses with me. Oh, I see. Gosh, man, what's going on around here? That's what we're going to find out. You say you were climbing when your horse ran away? Uh-huh. Quite a long time. I think we were on a narrow trail, and kind of I kept bumping against rocks or something on the side. And we were riding slowly. The chances are you were on one of these mountain trails. Well, I don't see any men or horses now, but we'll hop up to that range of mountains and look around. Feel well enough to take a little trip with me? Uh, sure. I'm okay now, Superman. But I'm mostly worried about Miss Lane and Horatio Horn. So am I. If they were with your party, we may be able to find them. Come on up with you, Jim. Hang on now. Okay. Here we go. Up. Up and away! Well, there's no sign of men on a horseback in these mountains, Jim. Now, tell me, when and where did you see Miss Lane last? I saw her last night in a hotel in Mount. Hotel? Are you sure? Positive. She was showing me the room where Horatio Horn disappeared when... All of a sudden, she disappeared, too. Disappeared? Uh-huh. It wasn't very light in the room, just moonlight coming in through the window. I could see her all right, and we were talking. And suddenly, she cried out, and she wasn't there anymore. Great Scott. And something happened to me. What? I don't know what. When I woke up, I was tied on a horse. But the hotel clerk denied that you or Miss Lane or Horatio Horn had ever been in his hotel. He did? Yes. Look, I'm going to take you back to Montville, Jim, where you and Clark Kent will have another talk with that hotel clerk and get to the bottom of this. Wait, did, did you say Mr. Kent? Yes, you, uh, you, you'll find Kent at the hotel. All right, hang on now. Up! Up! And away! <laughs> Here, Willie. Why did you tell me this morning that Jim Olson, Miss Lane, and Horatio Horn had never been in your hotel? Uh, now, look, mister. I'm only the clerk and handyman here. When Frosty Ketchell said I had to see that, I, I done it. I got it. Who is Frosty Ketchell? He's the owner of this hotel. And my boss. I see. He's a weary, too, if I ever saw one, Mr. Kent. Oh? He wears an old frock coat and tennis shoes. Wait a minute, and... Jim. Where's Frosty Ketchell now, Willie? I, I don't know. He left here last night. But I don't know where he went to. Oh, you don't, eh? We better get the sheriff, Mr. Kent. He'll make this character talk. I tell you, I don't know where Frosty went. I didn't want to lie to him, Mr. Kent. But Frosty said if I didn't, he'd cut my throat. Cheaper. He did, eh? And he'd do it, too. Well, tell me, did Frosty have Miss Lane and Horatio Horn with him when he left last night? No, sir, he didn't. I don't know what happened to them. I think he's lying, Mr. Kent. No, no, I ain't, so help me. Well, if you are, Willie, you'll need plenty of help. I can promise you that. Well, I want to see the room where the disappearing acts took place. So leave the way, Willie. If you know what's good for you, you won't try any tricks. This is the room, Mr. Kent. Okay. Now, tell me exactly what happened again. Okay. Well... Oh, wait, wait just a minute. You stay here, Willie. Yes, sir, Mr. Kent. All right, go on, Jim. Well, Miss Lane was standing right about here. No, she was just about here. 
when all of a sudden she cried out and, and disappeared. Then the same thing happened to you, huh? That's right. Mm, that Frosty. He knows the devil's ways. Yes, it's a devilish trick, all right, Willie. Ingenious, but very simple. You mean, you know what happened, Mr. Kent? Of course, Jim. Here's your answer. Watch. You see? Well, I'll be... Wait, a trap door. Exactly, Jim, a trap door. Set perfectly in the floor so it's not noticeable to ordinary eyes. The hinges are well-oiled and the edges are covered with rubber, so it's practically noiseless. But how come I couldn't see it when it opened? You said there was only moonlight in the room when Lois disappeared from sight, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. And Miss Lane said the lights blinked out for a second when Horatio Horn disappeared. Well, sure. Frosty Ketchell must have pulled the master switch for the lights just before he operated the trap door. Holy smokes. Maybe Miss Lane and Horatio are down in that, that black hole right now. Suffering cactus, if they oh, are... Oh, they're not, Jim. It's a small cellar with a mud floor under this room. Lois and Horatio are not in it. How do you know? I can't see a thing down there. You take my word for it, I... Uh oh. Now what, Mr. Ken? We just noticed something in that cellar that may give us the answer to why Lois and Horatio disappeared. And where they are. Out of the way, Jim. I'm going down there. Mr. Ken. Mr. Ken. Wait, Jim. I'll have it in a moment. I wonder what he saw down there, Willie. Don't know how he can see anything down in that hole. Listen. Doesn't it sound as if he's digging? Yeah. Will the light of match may be able to see. It. No, don't. Shucks. What'd you say, Mr. Ken? I got another one. Don't let any matches. Here we are. No, don't, Willie. Mr. Kent said not. Now, we can see. Hey, Scott, Kent, Willie, look out! As Weary Willie strikes a match above the dark cellar, Clark Kent shouts a warning. Then there is a blinding flash, followed by a terrific explosion. The floor seems to rise up under Jimmy Olsen and Weary Willie, and the rickety wooden hotel flies to pieces like a crazy house of cards. Shot skyward, and a giant puff of flame engulfed the ancient hotel. As Kent, moving with Superman's incredible speed, seized the stunned Jimmy and Weary Willie in his arms, and shielding them with his own invulnerable body, leaped up through the smoke and flame and flying timber. Up, up, and away! A hundred yards from the flaming hotel, Kent dropped to earth with his two unconscious charges. Then, noticing the townsfolk and miners were racing toward the scene, he sprawled down beside Jimmy and Weary Willie and closed his eyes, pretending to be unconscious. Get back, folks! Get back, give them air! You, Sam, George, Sam! Come on, help me carry these fellas into Doc Murtaugh's house! Come on, now, hurry up! You don't think he, he's dead, do you? Of course not, Olson. The doc said Mr. Kent will be okay. He's just knocked out. Oh. Ah, hear him? He's coming too now. Oh, boy, oh. is that a relief. Jim. Come right here, Mr. Kent. Are you okay? Uh, I guess so. What happened? Well, we... Now you just take it easy there for a while, Mr. Kent. Don't try to talk. Huh? Oh, hello, Sheriff. Here, now, now, don't sit up oh, yet. I'm all right. Tell me. What happened? There was an explosion, don't you remember? An explosion? And how? The whole hotel blew up. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. It's a miracle we weren't killed. Sure is. You know, you and I and Weary Willie were blown clear out of the place. That's so? Uh-huh. A miracle, that's what I call it. A dad-blasted miracle. Say that again, Sheriff. What baffles me is the cause of that there explosion. I can't figure out what... Oh, I remember it. now. There was gas in the cellar and Willie lit a match. That's right. Uh, I should have known it. That Willie never did have enough sense to come in out of the rain. By the way, is he all right? Sure, except for a couple of scratches. Boy, it's a lucky thing nobody else was in the hotel. Listen, Mr. Kent, uh, what's this Olson started to tell me about a trap door in the floor of the room over at the cellar? Yes, that's right, Sheriff. Huh? That's how Miss Lane and Horatio Horn and Jim, too, disappeared so mysteriously. Well, be... well how does it work? As nearly as I can figure it, somebody operated the trap door and dropped them down into the cellar. And then they were taken away somewhere. Well, I'll be dead black. Jim was knocked out and taken away by some men on horses. Fortunately, when his horse ran away with him, he was, uh, safe. Boy, was that an experience. Miss Lane and Horatio Horn were probably taken away the same way, but... Oh, wait a minute. Who took him away? Where to and why? Well, I think Frosty Ketchell, the owner of the hotel, is behind it, Sheriff. But as for where and why... Wait a minute. You say Frosty Ketchell did that? I said I think so. So do I. But, uh, but why would he do it? That I don't know. It must be tied up somehow with the big story that Horatio Horn and Miss Lane were working on. Story? What story is that? I don't know, Sheriff, but I think I have a clue. Hold on. 
Hold on, I just thought of something. Yeah? What is it, Sheriff? Well, some years back, when they were first opening up the mines around here, a couple of prospectors who struck, struck it rich dropped out of sight all of a sudden. Nobody ever did find out what happened to them, but a short time afterwards... Frosty Ketchell, who was clerk and porter over at the hotel, suddenly turned up with enough money to buy the place. Cheaper. Oh, and you think that uh, he... Maybe that's the story Mr. Horn and Miss Lane got onto, and so Frosty put them out of the way, too. Put oh, them out of the way? Easy, Jim, easy. But, gee whiz, Mr. Kent, if what the sheriff says is true... Uh, we'll, we'll know very soon, because I think I found a clue in Frosty's cellar that may help us find them. A clue? What clue, Mr. Kent? Uh, I'll show you. It's, uh... Great Scott. What's the matter? Well, what's them burned pieces of paper, Mr. Kent? These burned pieces of paper, Sheriff, with three newspaper pages on which were printed crossword puzzles, and the puzzles had been worked out. Huh? Crossword puzzles? Yes, I found them in Frosty Ketchell's cellar and had them in my hand when the explosion occurred. Look at them now. They're practically nothing but ashes. Well, forget it, Mr. Kent. Nothing lost. They couldn't mean nothing. And that's then. where you're wrong, Sheriff. Because crossword puzzles are tied up with this whole business. Huh? Say, that's right. Before she left Metropolis, Miss Lane said we could find out where she and Mr. Horn went by working out a certain crossword puzzle. Well, I'll be door. Right, Jim. That's how I found out you were in Moundville, by working out that puzzle. And I have a hunch these other three puzzles would have given us a clue to what this mystery is all about and where Lois and Horatio Horn are. But now they're useless. Golly, I don't see how, Listen, but... I don't understand none of this. What? Wait the... a minute. The tops of these pages where I held them aren't entirely destroyed... I can't make out anything myself, but the crime detection lab at Metropolis Police Headquarters has a device which will be able to bring out the dates of these newspapers. And with that, I can get I other... I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Kent, but I'm going to organize a posse pronto and hunt for Frosty Kent. Don't waste your time. I scoured the countryside and couldn't find him. You what? No, I don't think you will. I tell you, these newspaper fragments are our best chance. Look, if you just tell me what you're talking no about... No time now, Sheriff. Jim will tell you all we know. Uh, you keep an eye on him, will you, till I get back? I'll see you later. <laughs> I can change behind the house here. Now, out of these clothes, I can be in Metropolis in two shakes, says Superman. There we are. All set. Up! Up! And away! Wheeling high in effortless flight, a desert hawk watches a mounted horseman slip and slide down the side of a mountain, then disappear from sight. Several minutes later, the same horseman, having traveled a secret trail beneath the rocky shelf of the mountain, dismounts in a tiny glade surrounded by boulders, stunted trees, and giant cactus. He whistles three times, shrilly. And almost at once, heavy brush is thrown aside from the entrance to a deep cave, and Frosty Ketchel, a rifle in the crook of his arm, steps into view. Oh, you really... We're getting nervous waiting for you. Ain't a long way to ride, Frosty. You got those newspaper people here? I got two of them. Two? I thought you said there were three of them. There was. But the kid, Jim Olsen, got away. What? Why, you stupid fool, that'll spoil everything. Oh, just take it easy, early. Kid's dead. Ah, oh, he is, eh? Yep. But a horse he was tied on who ran away with him straight into the big canyon. Olsen didn't have a chance. Well, that's okay, then. Where are the other two? Miss Lane and the other one, that Horatio Horn, his name is, are tied up in the cave. Good. Bring them out here. Out here? You heard me. That deal's just about set to go. So I want to find out just how much those two reporters know to see if we have to change our plans any. Yeah, I see. Then what? Then we'll get rid of them and go to work. Bring him out here, Frosty. We'll get it over with. Certain that the puzzles were a clue that would lead him to Lois and Horatio Horn, Superman streaked back to Metropolis. And as we join him now, once more disguised as reporter Clark Kent, he is in the crime detection laboratory of Metropolis Police Headquarters. Sergeant Nielsen, a department technician, has placed the charred fragments of the newspapers under a powerful microscope. Now, all I ask, Sergeant Nielsen, is that you just bring out the dates on these newspaper fragments. Well, that's a tall order, Kent. There's practically nothing left of these newspapers. I know, but there's some faint printing left at the top of the pages there. I can't make it out, but I was hoping this new device of yours could. Well, there have to be some details in the first place for the chemicals to bring out. I know, but I'll can't I'll try you... my best, though. All right. Come on into the lab with me, Kent, and we'll see what we can get, if anything. <laughs> Oh, 
it doesn't look as if we've got anything, Kent. No, on the contrary, Sergeant, I can see a very faint outline of printed letters. Well, if you can, you've got sharper eyes than I have. Of course I have. Look, can you put this through that process again? Yes, but I think we're wasting time, Kent. We've got to keep trying, Sergeant. The lives of two people depend on this. Okay, I'll try it. But don't build any hopes on it. I think that did it, Sergeant. Yes, I can make out some letters now. Oh, you're dreaming, Kent. I can see the faintest suggestion of print, but that's all. And frankly, that's the best I can do. You've done enough. Now, wait till I get a pencil. There. Phoenix, Arizona Times. What? That date, February 20th. No, 26th. You mean you can actually see that? Of course. Second paper is the D-E-N Denver Telegram, December 7th, 1947. How can you read all that when I can't make out even a single letter? 1947. I'll tell you the secret someday. Now, the third paper. It's the Min- Min- Minneapolis Herald for September 9th, 1947. This beats me. And that's all I can read, but I think it'll be enough. Thanks a million, Sergeant. Now, I've got to join Perry White at the Daily Planet. <laughs> You see, Chief, I found the crossword puzzle page of a Phoenix Times, a Denver Telegram, and a Minneapolis Herald in Frosty Ketchell's cellar in Moundville. But the puzzles, which had been worked out, were destroyed when the hotel blew up. Crossword puzzle? Uh Uh-huh. Great, Caesar Kent, Lois, and Horatio Horn are missing. Heaven knows what's happened to them. And you waste time with crossword puzzles. Have you gone crazy? Not at all, Chief. I'm quite sure these puzzles are tied up somehow with their disappearance. What? And I'm hoping they'll lead me to wherever Lois and Horatio are now. Of all the cockeyed notions. Now listen, wait a minute. I want you to... Wait, Chief. Lois and Horatio disappeared in Frosty Ketchell's hotel. And that's where I found these crossword puzzles all worked out. Hidden in the cellar right under the secret trap door through which Lois and Horatio had been dropped. Caesar's ghost. Trap doors, crossword puzzles. What is this? What goes on? That's what we're going to find out as soon as Eddie gets here. Who? Eddie, the office boy. I sent him to our library for copies of the Daily Planet for last September 9th, December 7th, and February 20th. Well, what for? Those are the dates of the papers I found in Ketchell's cellar. I've already checked and made sure that the Phoenix Times, the Denver Telegram, and the Minneapolis Herald buy their crossword puzzles from the same syndicate we do. Yeah, well, so what? So the puzzles in the Daily Planet for those dates will be the same as the one that ran in the Times, Telegram, and Herald. I see. Now, what do we have? Hold it, Chief. Hold it. Come in. Oh, Eddie, get the papers I wanted? Yes, sir. Here they are, Mr. Kent. Well, thanks. All right, that's all, Eddie. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, listen, Kent. If you don't not waste any time, Chief. Here, you take this first paper, this September 9th. What? Find the crossword puzzle and work it out. I'll take the other two. But, Kent, busy, Chief. I'm sure this is the only way we'll be able to find Lois Lane and Horatio Horn. off on their feet so as they could walk. Come on, step up. Uh, take your hands off me, you, you ruffian. Shut up, you little windbag. Cut it out. him alone. Cut it out. So you two are reporters, eh? Yes, we are. Uh, rather, Miss Lane is a reporter. Uh, I'm merely the local correspondent for the Daily Planet in Squeen Run, Ohio. I see. And now that you know who we are, suppose you tell us who you are and why we were brought here. <laughs> As if you didn't know. We don't know. Do we, Mr. Horn? Why, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, no. No, of course not. What's the meaning of this outrage? Yes. You'd better release us at once or we'll... Hold have... it, Miss Lane, and get this, both of you. You're in a bad spot. Your lives ain't worth a nickel. But I'm going to give you a chance to save your lives. What? uh, What do you want us to do? You'll find out. You just shut your straps and listen to what Mr. Hurley's got to say. Now, look here, Mr. Hurley. You better let us... Stay quiet, Miss Lane, and listen to me. You and Mr. Horn are in a bad spot. But I'm going to give you a chance to save your lives. What, what, What do you want us to do? Just tell me all you know about us. Maybe I'll let you go. Well, what do you mean? T- tell you about what? You know what he means. Just tell me what you and Horn come to Mountville for. Well, uh, uh, we were wait. we were sent to to interview some some uh, uh, very important uh, men who were to be in Mountville, and uh, uh, they were atomic scientists. So you're uh, lying, Hurley. I know they are. Frank. We are not. It's the truth. Ah, cut it out, Horn. 
Frosty heard you tell Miss Lane that you were on to a big story that was going to break in Mount. Yeah, and I heard you say you had figured it out by a crossword puzzle. Oh, well, we, we thought that... It, uh, Come on, uh, on, uh, quit stalling. Uh, Let's have it. What and how much do you know? Don't tell him anything, Horatio. You shut up, Miss Lane. Come on, Horn. No. No, I, I refuse to say a word. Good for you, Horatio. Why, you're running the little... Now, Frosty. Now, look, Horn, this is your last chance to tell me everything you know. I ain't got much time. No, sir. I, I can't trust your promise. If I talk, you'll probably kill us at once. But while you don't know how much I know... Look. Y- you... you know what this is? <gasps> You put that down. Well, oh, yes. It's a revolver, a, a forty-five, I'd say. That's just exactly what it is, Horn. And it's loaded, too. Well, don't point it at us. Now I'm going to count to three. Unless you start talking before I get to three, you're both done for. Good heavens. Great Gulliver. What do we do, Miss Lane? Good heavens. What do we do, Miss Lane? One. I don't know. Two. Oh, dear me. This is your land. Hey, Hurley. Somebody's coming. Yeah. Quick, Frosty, get up the trail and see what it is. Yeah, okay. You two stay right where you are. Uh, yes, sir. See him yet, Frosty? Yeah. Hey, it's me. Oh, okay. Come on back it's here. It's one of their gang ratio. Yes, stash it. Promise. Yeah, what's up, Pete? <sighs> Sheriff Winters and a posse about ten guys just rode off the desert and started up the mountain. Oh, Sheriff wonderful. Winters, yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Yes. They find a trail leading down here. We're dead ducks. They must be looking for these newspaper reporters. Yes, and they'll find us, too. And they'll take care of you, ruffians. Shut up, you two. Where are the boys, Pete? Over the head of the trail. Well, get up there and wait for me. If the sheriff does find the trail, we'll drag gulch him. Go on, get going. Okay, Hurley. Come on, get up. Frosty. Yeah, Hurley. Take on and Miss Lane into the cave and keep Nail I get back. No, 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 look here. Why not finish him now and I'll go with you? No, the sheriff and his posse might hear the shots. Anyhow, I want to talk to these two before we finish well, up. Well, look, I know. Now, now, do as I say. Okay. Back in the cave, you two. I, you'll be sorry for this, you, you, you scoundrel. Yes, when the sheriff and his men get here, they'll we'll... never get here alive. Now move into the cave. <laughs> Frosty now, Miss Lane. Right outside the cave, Horatio. How are you doing with the rope? Fine. I ought to have them sawed off my arms pretty soon. This is a sharp rock. Well, supposing you do get them off, what then? We've got to get away from here before that scoundrel Hurley gets back. But Frosty's right outside and he has a rifle. I realize that. But unless we get away before Hurley comes back, well, we'll be dead ducks, as they say. I know. But maybe the sheriff will get here before... We can't they... count on that, Miss Lane. Because even if the sheriff does find the secret trail to this cave, Hurley and his gang will ambush him. You heard me. Here comes Frosty. Oh, and I almost had my hands free. He went away again. Oh, thank heaven. Go to work on those ropes again, Horatio, and hurry. I'm doing the best... I can. Where's Frosty now? He's walking around the clearing. Oh, good heavens, I think he's... There. Did it, my God. Oh, wonderful. Just get it unwound now. There. Oh, there. Hurry. Hurry and get me untied. One second till I get my knife. Now, turn around, Miss Lane. I'll have your rope off in a jiffy. There you are. Oh, thanks. You're free as a bird. Free as a bird in a cage, you mean? What do we do now? We've got to get away from here before Hurley returns to finish us. But how? With Frosty right outside and armed? Let me see now. Oh, dear, if only I had my manual. Your what? My manual. From the famous correspondence school detective and crime detection institute, you know. What in the world do you want that for at a time like this? Well, the manual lists a thousand methods of escape from all sorts of predicaments. Great. I'm sure it'd be very useful, Horatio, if only to hit Frosty on the head with... Well, we don't have it, so let's... I make it a practice to read the manual at odd moments when I'm home. Come to think of it, I must know it by heart. Will you please forget that ridiculous thing? We've got to figure some way to get away from Frosty. Yes, yes, of course. By Gulliver, I have it. What? You have what? The solution. Why didn't I think of it before? What? What are you talking about? Oh, the ropes, of course. The ropes? Yes, yes, the long ones that were tied around our legs and bodies. They weren't cut either. Now, now, you just leave it to me, Miss Lane. I'll have us away from here in no time. Be very quiet now, Miss Lane. Well, don't worry, Horatio. 
Listen, are, are you sure you know how to throw a lariat? Oh, certainly. Three of my correspondence school lessons were devoted only to the rope. Oh, I know, but if you miss... Uh, here it goes. Hey, what the hell? Got him right around the neck, Miss Lane. Look out, oh. his gun. I'll pull him off his feet. Now you hang on to the rope, Miss Lane. All right. Keep it tight while I knock him out. Hurry, hurry, so if he gets oh. loose, but... Let's see now. His gun. I'll knock him out of his ass. Hurry, I can't hold him. Oh, good. Horatio, I'm proud of you. Hey, Crossy. Oh, Miss Lane, listen. Hey, Crossy. Oh, my goodness. It's Hurley coming back. Oh, there's a trail out of here somewhere. Come on. It, climb over these rocks. Crossy, where are you? He's coming fast. Hurry, Horatio, hurry. I, I am. Hey, stay on that newspaper about it. Stop, you. Stop. He saw us. Keep going. Go down, He's going to shoot. Shoot. Wait, Miss Lane, behind this big rock. Come on out of there, you two, or we'll blast you out. What did you, Manuel, tell us to do now, Horatio? Oh, dear me, I, I can't remember, Miss Lane. I got over. I'm afraid we're we're trapped. <laughs> Crouched behind the boulder, Lois Lane and Horatio Horn hear shots flying over their heads and all about them, as Hurley and his man Pete pour a withering rifle fire toward them. Meanwhile, 2,000 miles away in his office at the Metropolis Daily Planet, Superman and his guys of Clark Kent have just completed working out three crossword puzzles with editor Perry White. Then, after studying them for a moment, Kent exclaims, I've got it, Chief. I think I know where Lois and Horatio Horn are, and I'm on my way to find them right now. As we join them now, Lois and Horn are crouched behind a tall rock where Hurley and his confederate, Pete, pour a withering rifle fire at their hiding place from the little clearing below. Oh, by Gulliver, this is a tight spot, Miss Lane. That, Horatio, is putting it mildly. Hold fire, Pete. Hey, you two. Come out now with your hands high and we'll blast you out from behind that rock. Oh, dear. Don't what move, a... Miss Lane. Come on out here and nothing will happen to you. Don't believe him, Miss Lane. He intends to finish us. I know. He made that clear before. Okay, you've had your chance. Come on, Pete. We'll climb up there and finish it. Horatio, they're coming for us. Yes, I, I know. Well, isn't there something we can do? Nothing I can think of. Good heavens. Horatio, you've got a gun. Oh, oh no, Miss Lane. I, I never carry firearms. But you have. Look, there's a rifle in your hand. Huh? Well, why, so it is, by Gulliver. Now, wherever did I get this? It's Frosty Ketchell's rifle. You knocked him out with it, remember? Uh, yes, so I did. I, I must have brought it along with me. Well, don't just look at it. Shoot at them. Shoot? Uh, uh, oh, 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 yes, yes, shoot. Uh, but, but, but I've never handled firearms before, Miss Lane. My correspondence course, uh, scientific crime detection, you know, didn't teach us how to shoot guns. Look out! You're pointing it right at me. Oh, dear me, sorry. Now, how does this... <laughs> Great Jehoshaphat, what happened? You... Hey, I got a gun. Pull the truck. Get down it. low. Give them another shot, Horatio. But be careful to shoot at them this time. Yes, yes, all right, Miss Lane. I, 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 I'll aim right at the rascal. Keep down, Horatio, or then... <gasps> Look out, Horatio! Oh, dear me, they almost hit me. Good heavens, you almost blew our feet off that time. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't realize... Give it. me that gun. Yes. Here you are, Miss Lane. Do you know how to handle firearms? Not really, but at least I know enough to point the gun away from us. Well, I... I never liked firearms, and there wasn't anything about them in the course I took from the famous correspondent school and detective institute. Let them have it, Pete. I can just get one shot near them and drive them back. Be, be careful, Miss Lane. Here goes. Stop, Pete. They're getting close. Why? Why, I hit right near them, Horatio. Good for you, Miss Lane. Look, look, they're running back down to the clearing. Why, run, you rascals, or we'll blow you to bits. <laughs> look at them dive down behind the rocks. Say, you're a regular Annie Oakley, Miss Lane. You saved our lives. I was just lucky, Horatio, but I'm afraid our luck has run out. Uh, well, what do you mean? Did you hear that? We're out of ammunition. Oh, no. Yes. If Hurley and his playmate decide to come up here for us again, we're, we're really done for this time. Oh, dear me. But but you scared them. Maybe maybe they'll go away now. Don't kid yourself, Horatio. They won't. Well, look out. Look out. They're firing at us again. Yes. And when they don't get any answering fire from us, they're going to come and get us. Wait. The sun is almost down now. 
Maybe as soon as it's dark, we can get... Oh, forget it, Horatio. With no more bullets to drive them off. We're just a pair of sitting ducks. Yes. Dead ducks, I'm afraid. Their last hope gone, Lois Lane and Horatio Horn wait helplessly behind the boulder. As the great ball of the sun sinks below the purple mountain and deepening shadows close in around the little hidden clearing. But meanwhile, Superman has streaked back from Metropolis to the little mining town of Moundville. And once more in his guise of reporter Clark Kent, has hurried to join cub reporter Jimmy Olsen and Sheriff Withers, who tells him of his unsuccessful search of the mountains for Lois and Horatio Horn. Yep, I took a posse far as the mountains, Mr. Kent, but I couldn't find hard in the hair of Miss Lane or Mr. Horn, nor for that varmint Frosty Catchell, neither. Uh-huh. Well, what are we going to do, Mr. Kent? We're going to find Lois and Horatio, Jim, and I think I know how. Well, you do? Yes, but I need your help, Sheriff Withers. Anything you say, Mr. Kent, what can I do? Well, first, tell me this, Sheriff. Is there a gold mine somewhere near here that's being worked now? Why, well, sure, the Star Plaza. What about it? Well, if the theory I worked out is right, and I'm practically certain it is... The gang that abducted Miss Lane and Horatio Horn are planning to hijack a gold shipment from that mine. What? Are you serious, Mr. Kent? Yes, I figure Miss Lane and Horatio must have learned about their operations and plans and came to Moundville to get the story, which is why Frosty Ketchell and his gang grabbed them and took them away. Uh, just a minute, Olson. Who told you this, Mr. Kent? No one, Sheriff. It's just straight reasoning, plus what I learned from those crossword puzzles. Crossword puzzles? That's right. Now, look. Oh, I don't we... get it. Neither do I. Listen, Mr. Look, Kent. I'll explain everything later, Sheriff. Right now, we've got work to do. Where's the big boss of the Star Placer Mine? Is he in office here in Moundville? There, he's up at the mine right now. They're going to make a big gold shipment tonight. Tonight? I... Great Scott, we haven't much time then. Come on. Huh? Now, well... now, hold on, Mr. Kent. Not a moment to waste, Sheriff. Tonight's shipment must be the one the gang is planning to hijack. And grabbing that gang is our only way to find Miss Lane and Horatio Horn. So come on, show me where that mine is. Well, them trucks down there are coming up here to take the gold shipment out, Mr. Kent. I know, Sheriff. Now, the hijackers must be somewhere nearby. I can't understand why I haven't been able to find them. Well, if you're right about the hijackers, they must be holed up in some good hiding place around here. That's right. But I covered all this territory for miles around, and I certainly would have seen them. And Lois and Horatio, too, if they were anywhere. What do you mean, you certainly would have seen them? Oh, well, well, I... Uh, well, what see... I want to know is, how come you're so sure Miss Lane and Mr. Horn were grabbed by hijackers, Mr. Kent? Uh. And what makes you think they're going to hijack this gold shipment I... tonight? Yeah, I'd like to know that, too. I told you, I'll explain everything later. Oh, there's no sign of our hijacking friends yet. And I don't think there will be. Oh, there will be, all right. They'll either strike right here or somewhere along the route. When they do, I'll find out what they did with Lois and Horatio. Gee whiz, I sure hope so. Don't you worry, Jimmy, I will. The only thing that worries me is that... that I may be too late to... to save their lives. <coughs> Superman may very well be too late, because at this moment, as he waits several miles away at the mine, Hurley and Pete are beginning a cautious climb toward the large boulder behind which Lois Lane and Horatio Horn are hiding. They can't see us to shoot at now, Pete. We'll get rid of them reporters, then we won't have nothing to worry about. Now we'll have to make it fast, Hurley. Trucks will be along pretty soon. They won't be along for another hour or two. They have to load up at the mine first, you know. I know, but I got everything timed just right. We'll finish these two reporters, then join the boys at the head of the trail. Take it easy now. We're getting close to where they are. Uh, Hurley and Peter are coming for us, Miss Lane. I, I can hear them. So can I. Well, Horatio, I, I guess this is the end. Practically all the gold is already loaded in the trucks, Mr. Kent, but nothing's happened yet. Yeah, I know, Jim. Yeah, where are them hijackers you said were going to show up here at the mine, Mr. Kent? I, I, I don't know. I, I can't understand it, Sheriff. Mm -hmm. No signs of the hijackers anywhere along the road from here to Desert City. Wait a minute, what's that? What, huh? Mr. Kent? Don't you hear those shots? Uh, I don't hear any shots. No, neither do I. Well, I do. I'm going to see what's going on. Wait, I'll go with you, Mr. Kent. No, Jim, you stay with the sheriff. Well, let him go, Olson. He's a hearing thing. Here. I can change behind this shack. Those shots came from the vicinity of that far mountain there. I'm going to investigate them. As uh, Superman. There we are now. All set. Up! Up! 
And away! How come Horn and Miss Lane don't return our fire? I Early? think it's because they ain't got any ammunition left. Come on, Pete. We'll pile in there and finish him. Okay. Let's go. Kid, I'm coming right here. Keep back, you, you ruffians. Quit oh. your kidding, Horn. You know you're trapped. Come on out or we'll shoot the kill. No. No. Stay back. Stay back. All right, Pete. We're going to have it. Not so fast, my tough friend. First, I'll take those guns. Who are you? Where are you from? Uh, uh, white guy. Yeah. So, oh, you boys want to play rough, right? eh? Okay, suppose I crack your murderous skulls together like this. Oh, wonderful, Superman, wonderful. Oh, Superman, if you hadn't got here, just when you did, All right, did, easy we... now, Miss Lane, easy. Everything's under control now. Tell me, is this the hijacker's hideout? Uh, that's right. This this fellow you just knocked out is Hurley, the, the leader of the gang. Uh, the other one is Pete. And that fellow down in the clearing who's crawling into the cave, uh, that's Frosty Ketchel. Yes, I see. And the rest of the gang are hiding on a secret trail somewhere nearby, Superman. Uh-huh. They're going to hijack a big gold shipment tonight. You mean they think they are, Miss Lane. Listen now, I'm going to take you two back to the Star Plaster Mine where you'll be safe. Then I'll be back for Hurley and Frosty Ketchel and the rest of their outfit. Okay, hang on now. Up! Up! And away! Here we are, Miss Lane, Mr. Horn, the Star Placer Mine. Superman. Hello, Jim. And Miss Lane and Horatio Horn. Oh, boy. Oh, Jim, I'm so glad to see you. Hello, Jim, old chap. Tough run cactus. Are you really Superman? That's right, Sheriff. Uh oh, I see the trucks have already left for the gold shipment. That's right. They, uh... And there isn't a minute to lose. Up with you, Sheriff. No, no, no hold on there. Wait You're going wait. with me to stop a hijacking. Up and away! <laughs> Here we are, Sheriff. Now. Oh, glory be. I, I never had a ride like that in my life. Uh-huh. Where are we? Well, if you look straight down for about 50 yards, you'll see about a dozen men on that mountain trail. See them? Huh? Over there. Why, why, yeah. Yeah, that's where the old lead mine backs up into the mountain, but... uh... Wait a minute, did you say lead mine? Sure, but I... Great Scott, that's why I couldn't find the hideout before. Lead is the one substance I can't see through. Huh? Now, listen, Wait a minute, Sheriff. The gold trucks will be along in a moment, and I want to take care of those hijackers before there's any shooting and somebody's hurt. Hijacked? You, you mean them fellas are hijackers? Right. But in a few minutes, they're going to be jailbirds. You stay here and watch, Sheriff. There's a good moon you'll be able to see. Up, up, and away! So Superman waded into those hijackers, and in about a minute, he was the only one to stand up. <laughs> yep, and the hijackers were all on their backs accounting the stars. Boy, I wish I could have seen that. <laughs> yeah, so do I, Jim. You'd have got a kick out of that, too, Mr. Ken. Huh? Oh, oh yes, it must have been quite a sight. Ken, yeah. how? Incidentally, where were you, Clark? Hmm? Jim and the sheriff say you disappeared from the mine. Oh, but... I, I was around, Lois. Say, by the way, Sheriff, did hmm? Hurley and Frosty Ketchell talk? Oh, they sure did, Mr. Kent. As soon as they woke up in my jail here and realized the jig was up, well, they sang plenty. Oh, what's the story? Well... Seems that the big boss of the gang is in uh, Metropolis. Metropolis? That's right, son. Fellow who runs a little syndicate there that makes up crossword puzzles for the newspaper. Crossword puzzles? Yeah, he had spies are checking up on all the gold mines, you see. And uh, when they let him know a big shipment was going out pretty soon, why, he put the name of that town in a crossword puzzle. So that's Then why his the gang, which was spread out through the West, would see it in the puzzle. And started drifting into that mine town. Oh, how do you like that? Yeah. Incredible. How did you ever get on to it, Horatio? Well, uh, I happen to be a crossword puzzle fan, you see. Horatio, you're a credit to the famous correspondence school for detectives institute. It, you <laughs> certainly famous are. Famous correspondence school and detective institute for scientific crime deduction, if you please. <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> Say, what about the boss hijacker in Metropolis, Sheriff Withers? Did you contact the Metropolis police yet to pick him up? Sure did. Sent off a wire, Mr. Kent, and asked him to phone the back. Good. Well, now, I think we'd better... Uh, wait a minute. Maybe that's Metropolis to call now. Hello? Yeah, I'll wait. Is it Metropolis, Sheriff? I... Uh, 
I don't know. Operator said long distance. What's the matter, Sheriff? I, I don't know. I feel kind of... Sheriff, wait a He's falling. I got him. Good heavens. Wait, let me... Let me help you. Jim! What? Jim, what's the matter? I... Jimmy, what is it? Oh. Clark, he's fainted. Great Scott, I... What's happening here? I I can't understand this, Lois. Get some water, please. Hurry. All right, Clark. I... I... Oh. Miss Lane. Horatio, help her. I... I... I can't. What? Mr. Kent, I... Huh? Horatio! <laughs> Great Scott! Horatio and Lois passed out, too. What's happening here? I... Wait a minute, I... I'm feeling strangely dizzy, too. What is this? As Kent stared in amazement, unable to comprehend what had happened, he himself suddenly reeled dizzily and fell to his knees beside Jimmy Olsen. For a brief moment, he stayed that way. Now, calling desperately on his fading strength, he picks up Jimmy and staggers to the door. With groping fingers, he finds the knob, turns it, and pitches out through the open door with Jimmy in his arms. The night air sweeping in from the desert is cool, fresh, and Kent sucks it deeply into his lungs. Oh, this air is good. Oh, I can breathe now. Now, just put Jim down. He'll be all right in a moment. There. There. No, I'll go back in and get the others. Oh. Oh. Mr. Ken. I'm right here, Jim. You feeling better? Oh, I, I guess so. Oh, what happened? Well, those hijackers tossed some capsules of knockout gas into the sheriff's office. Knockout gas? Uh-huh. One of the hijackers must have reached out through the bars and tossed the stuff into the office. I found the broken capsules on the floor. Very powerful stuff, too. It even made me a little dizzy. Now, listen, Holy Jim. mackerel. What about Miss Lane and Horatio Horn and the sheriff? I just took them across the street to the village doctor. He says they'll be okay soon. Oh, swell. I'm going after Hurley and his gang now. You wait here, Jim. Hurley? You mean he escaped? Sure, he and his whole gang. There's no trick to break out of this tin plate jail. Jeepers, but They got I... away in Sheriff Withers' car and headed out on the desert road. I think they're going to make another try to hijack that gold ship. I'll see you later, Jim. Oh, wait, where are you going? After Hurley, of course. Well, how? What can you do? Mr. Kent? Wait, listen. There we are. Good change behind the jail here. This is a job for Superman. Can't see Hurley anymore, but I'll find him. There we are. All set. Now, up, up, and away! <laughs> I can see the gold truck snow early, climbing that hill way up ahead, see? Yeah, we'll be up with them in a few minutes, Pete. Get ready, you guys. We're going to work soon. Yeah, okay, Hurley, okay. I counted six trucks. This will be a big hole. Yeah, and an easy job, too. <laughs> Good thing I had those capsules of knockout gas on me, huh, Pete? <laughs> you said it. Hey, if the sheriff and them reporters come to, though, maybe they'll figure we went after the... Gold. Relax. They'll sleep for a long time. Check your guns, boys. We're almost there. Yeah, okay. Now, listen, Pete. We'll crowd the first truck, see? Yeah. And then what we'll... Hey, what the... Pete! What? We're flying! Holy smokes! We're off the ground! Hey, look, Pete! We're way up in the air! We, we, we must be dreaming! <laughs> Who's that laughing? I, I don't know! I, I think I'm going nuts! Next stop, Moundville Jail. Howard! <laughs> Mr. Kent, you should have seen it. You just should have seen it. Seen what, Jim? Superman flying down from out of the sky with Sheriff with his car and the hijackers in it. No kidding. <laughs> On the level. And, oh, brother, you should have seen those hijackers' faces. Yeah? Yeah, some were white as sheets and some were green. <laughs> they couldn't talk. They couldn't even move. Yeah, I'll bet. Look, uh, how are Lois and Horatio and the sheriff? Okay, but pretty groggy. The doctor thinks they ought to stay in bed till tomorrow. All right, you stay with him. I've got to get back to Metropolis and see if the police picked up the brains of this hijacking gang. Oh, I'll go with you. No, I've got to make time, Jim. Oh, what do you mean? How can you make faster time without me? Huh? 
Oh, uh, well, I, I mean, well, somebody's got to stay here and make sure that Lois and Horatio are all right, see? Well... And I... you're elected. See you in Metropolis, Jim. So long. <laughs> Come in. Say, Inspector, did you get... That man. Hello, Clark. Well, what are you doing in Inspector Henderson's office? I'm waiting for the inspector, of course. I've got an appointment with him. Oh, where is he? i got to see him right away, too. Well, he's due in soon. Oh, congratulations. What for? For rounding up that gang of gold hijackers out west. It was a nice piece of work. Oh, thanks, but it's not all over yet. The brains of that outfit is here in Metropolis. He runs a little syndicate which makes up crossword puzzles for the newspapers and he... You hi- mean he did? What? He's all through directing his hijackers by tip-offs and his crossword puzzles. Matcom, his name is, and he's in a nice, tight cell in the city jail. Oh? Well, fine, but how come you know all about this, Batman? Well, it just happens that Robin and I were working on the case from this end, Clark. Oh, I see. But it's all over now, thanks to you. <laughs> thanks to Horatio Horn of Squeen Run, Ohio, you mean. <laughs> he's the one who tumbled to the plot in the first place. Good old Horatio. Yeah. Love that little screwball. <laughs> Beneath the sprawling city of Metropolis lies a vast network of dimly lit tunnels through which gleaming steel rails extend web-like in all directions. Mile after mile of track carrying thundering electric trains crowded with people. This is the lifeline of a mighty city, the great Metropolis Subway. In the central traffic office, the mechanical brain of the underground subway system... Two men are seated before an electrified map on which pinpoints of red and green light indicate the positions of all trains moving through the twisting labyrinth of tunnels. Below the map is a long row of switches, each marked with a number. To the left and right are plate glass windows looking out on the murky darkness of the underground city. Suddenly a train roars past the windows, its lights illuminating the faces of the two men. One of them reaches out and throws a switch. And as the last car disappears into the darkness, he slips off his high stool and stretches his cramped muscles. Uh, well, I'll clear now until 4.42 at 8.20. I'll go up and get a pot of coffee. Okay. Uh, how about a cruller, Joe, or one of them jelly buns? Or something? No, thanks. Coffee will do me. Okay, all right. Alone now in the traffic office... Joe Miller, chief dispatcher, watches the illuminated map with its tiny lights blinking like red and green fireflies. He looks up at the clock, but before his eyes can reach it, he catches a reflection in the plate glass window and he stiffens. Behind him, the door to the traffic office is opening slowly, inch by inch. Holding his breath, Joe Miller remains motionless, watching the window. Suddenly, a strange figure slips into the room and closes the door quickly behind him. Joe Miller spins around on his stool. And his eyes bulge in terrified amazement. For there, facing him, armed with a huge cutlass, and dressed in the full regalia of a pirate, is what seems to be the ghost of Captain Kidd. (coughs) Captain Kidd, most infamous of all pirates, has been dead, as we know, for more than a century. But then, who is this man with a skull and crossbones on his three-cornered hat? Fellows and girls, we're beginning a fascinating new story of action, thrills, and mystery, which we promise will keep you on the edges of your chairs from beginning to end. Be sure to tune in tomorrow, same time, same station, for Chapter One of The Ghost Brigade on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time. This program came from New York. Stay tuned to your mutual station for Captain Midnight, which follows in just a moment. And right after Captain Midnight, you will hear Tom Hicks and his Ralston straight shooters. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.